The rain in Spain stays mainly in the plain. And here, folks, you're witnessing Eric Hall Justice Man's speech therapy. This, there you this go. Is, this is what I did. I actually it, thought that was the education in Texas. <laughs> that, that is, that is well, that's high school education in Texas. <laughs> that's what I thought. <laughs> no. Come on. You must here. be that's... from one of them other 38 states. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man! There's 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 38 states. 39 really? with Texas. Oh well, <laughs> just I no, they're, they're Western things. That's all Indian territory. Well, that didn't yeah. sound the least bit racist. <laughs> oh Engines? my god! Don't 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 get me started on them. They nativity americans or something like that the way they call them <laughs> yes they come with camels honoring christ <laughs> <laughs> the, the apaches are the whole wise men <laughs> oh god all right well, the, the, heat mail. Are the uh, well, that, cows okay, so. <laughs> send so. the heat mail uh heat mail to mhobo inc at gmail.com <laughs> Attention, Carrie. <laughs> this, this took a weird turn. <laughs> I, I was I was just about to bring in the Mormons in there too, but uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna refrain on that because we're really big in Utah right now. So um, welcome. It is Tuesday. It is seven o'clock central. It is sometime in Yankee Land. Um, and Thank you for bringing all of your wives to this view. <laughs> <laughs> Although we would appreciate it if you got your wives a separate electronic device to watch so we would know how many viewers we have. Also, if you could keep could. the above 18-year-old wives separate from the lower 18, we're for mature because audiences only. Mature audiences <laughs> only. That's right. So keep your <coughs> sister slash wives um, under the age. Well, I don't know what the age of consent there is. Maybe it's by the time Whoa. they're 15, they're pretty well broken in over there. So maybe 13 and under. <laughs> unsubscribe, Sorry, yeah. unsubscribe, unsubscribe, unsubscribe. <laughs> unsubscribe, unsubscribe. <laughs> no, um, this is uh, this is Murder Hobo Inc. Um, between the roles where we're supposed to be discussing D D, but we got off on a terrible <laughs> tangent there, for which I apologize for profusely. Uh, will not happen. I, I blame you, Scott. <laughs> no, uh, it, it, Jews, it am I fault. right? <laughs> Nope, uh, we're we're just gonna okay. it. we're off the air. That was the last. <laughs> <one>. <laughs> the last one. Uh, yeah, done. Come on, guys. <laughs> totally we're, we're done. Trying to keep it together. Really trying to keep it together here. We have a great episode for you tonight. We're going to discuss character creation and how you can bring your character to life. I I've so, got my AI on my desk, and I can't tell you what it started asking me when Kyle said that. <laughs> <laughs> So. Gotta know now. Oh God! I'll be editing the shit out of this one. <laughs> so we're we're really gonna we're really gonna have to just uh, just power through this giggles section right now to where we're thinking about funny things that are only funny to us in our heads, but we should be having a filter right now. That yeah yeah work. Maybe we, it's gonna start working. Second. We need Any to reboot our working. social. So we have filters. three episodes. <laughs> right. Right, social so filters. we're going to, um, yes, social filters. So we are going to be discussing three episodes and then discussing how we can use character creation to bring life to a campaign and how we play them inside a campaign, uh, how they can grow through a campaign, for instance, how, how, a, uh, how a character can start off feeling one thing or believing <clears throat> one thing, and as they mature and uh, grow up through the character's advance, how they may be able to change their worldview, change change how they do and that's how you, you bring character creation uh, to life inside the campaign so that will be the topic for tonight nothing of what we would discuss the first five minutes for uh, oh. which was awful and uh, we should not have gone we should not have gone there <laughs> horrible um I feel anyway, like so i've personally gone in worse places so yeah, i feel yeah. relatively tame tonight <laughs> <laughs> I know, I know, I know. But uh, let's uh, let's start here to, by discussing quickly. Um, we this is um, Murder Hobo Inc. Uh, follow us on Twitch. Follow us on Twitter. Uh, we had sponsors. We don't know if we're going to stick we with us much them longer. Anymore. <laughs> uh, <laughs> we have Oddfish Games, um, makers of Adventure Sense. 
and we also have our pirate dog dice. Did I get that right? Mm-hmm. Ah. I think so. Dirty. Pirate yes, dog. pirate dog. Oh, not Arr. double dog, not dookie dog. None of that stuff. Pirate dog dice. Loving it. Remembering that time. We have stuff um, that we can buy or that you can buy. It's at some tiny URL somewhere probably on the thing. I don't have it memorized, but you can click on and get there. And uh, if you want to chat, um, we have a Discord um, server as well. Uh, we have all of our archives um, on Murder Hobo, Tiny UR, something other. Don't know what it is. Um, there, there you go. Oddfish Games uh, has their own website. I don't know if we have a link to it on our banner page as well. Oddfishgames or oddfishgame.com. Um, and th they do something other than just the adventure sense. Kyle, you always know about the, what is it? Um, the the what is Shine it? Project. The Shine Project. Why don't I ever remember that? You're old. You forget I show. Know. Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't know. I don't know why. Jack Nicholson remember. enters your head and yeah, uh, I his think. life, and it's like, yeah. here's Johnny. Or oh, it's Scatman Crothers in my head. <laughs> now, now, that, now, now that you said that, and me being old and not remembering, and then Jack Nicholson and The Shining, I will probably remember it now because that's just obscure enough for me to get planted into my head. The Shine Project, The Shining. Okay. Yeah. You got it. Movie where everyone is dying. Gotcha. Okay, got it. I'm good. Yeah. <laughs> our, but I joined our, the uh, Jack Nicholson project. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Lord. Almost got it. <laughs> Close. I was getting there. I was getting there. Um, okay, so we have uh, we have three topics we're going. Sorry, three. Um, if I can find them here, our episodes that we were we were going to be discussing. Um, <clears throat> we have our normal three games that we have. I uh, believe that we have. Um, I, I'm getting, trying to find it, but you know I can't find it anymore. I can't find the uh, 198 yeah, well, Ebu exploration. Thank you very much. That was You're our welcome. cacophony episode. If it wasn't correct, mm -hmm. so that who was. wants to talk about cacophony? <clears throat> who wants to talk about what happened in Exit One? Uh, well, I think if I remember from last, everyone had. The, was that the one where you were trying to resolve everyone had split up or everyone had come back together and now you're doing something? Why don't you fill us in on what happened there? Uh, okay, <laughs> I sure will. <laughs> uh, all right, uh, Cacophony, episode 198, Emu Exploration. Oh, by the way, I'm David. I play Zidadar, the arcane trickster changeling <laughs> on Cacophony. I can be found here on Tuesdays on BTR usually, too. <laughs> and every once in a while, I get a one shot. So that's who I am. I'm not just some random guy. Uh, You're a rando. <laughs> I, uh, I'm a rando. Uh, yeah, so episode 198, Emo Exploration. Uh, basically, we picked up where our cliffhanger left off with Caitlin, uh, well, her character Daphne, having a spear to her throat by a kind of mm, hybrid lioness, uh, equine, humanoid creature. Uh, they are the emu, and... Yeah, turns out we were surrounded by him. <laughs> and um, it wasn't until uh, our necromancer, played by Carrie, who is Camille, uh, spoke that uh, she uh, deterred the, the lioness uh, with the um, spear to poor Daphne's throat. Yeah, at what point uh, Daphne became just weirdly... Uh, well, no, not really. No, she was, yeah, of course, attracted to the species. So that's that's how she rolls. <laughs> so she's attracted to everything. <laughs> so yeah, after a loud, a loud, loud lion roar, summoning the rest of the emu and Daphne's apparent. Well, I won't go any further. I'll leave that for the video for you guys to watch. We end up getting taken to the chief then. We tell them what our intentions are, are to go to the tower of the Kurd. Uh, they tell us it's not possible. Uh, we glean a little more information on them, finding out ab about, about the tradition of the Kurd. Uh, basically, whoever sits on the throne has the power of the tower. So... 
Uh, anyway, uh, we meet a mysterious figure who turns out to be a humanoid. I won't spoil that. <laughs> and uh, yeah, uh, we make our way uh, with uh, the lioness who had uh, Daphne by the throat, who turned out to be the chieftain's <laughs> daughter. So the princess is actually escorting us on the way to the tower. So... Episode follows up by uh, Camille getting pounded by a big wow. fist of water. <laughs> yeah, I went there. <laughs> Carrie, you listen? No. <laughs> and face planning on it's a pole just, vault. It's so just, it it just doesn't stop. Work. I, I mean, you know. It's a train wreck. It's just going there. <sighs> uh, it's Snowpiercer. You know, it just go plows through. <laughs> so uh anyway that was episode 198 that's where we left off with the final encounter with a water weird anyway that's it take it who's ever next <laughs> kyle that's you <laughs> he's in his zone man yeah he's yes, in his uh, zone he's in his zone so so kyle i believe the episode was called the serpentine temple um so why don't you tell us about uh serpentine temple and under my notes zaniness was you guys decided to particularly mess with our dm a little bit i'm not even going to cuss now i'm not even going to curse i'm going to play it so teetotaler i am going to (laughs) just try to absolutely say nothing but fiddlesticks and oh golly gosh that's going to be as big as i can we just, yeah. I'm going to be alone then this show. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, my oh, you can go ahead and drop the F bomb, <laughs> Frank. <laughs> uh, so, okay, Kyle. So, what happened? What happened? I guess I'll just be introducing myself. Hi, I'm Kyle. I'm going to be DMing a uh, horrible, Good. horrible consolation campaign on <laughs> Thursday. I'm gonna. That's what I'm gonna name it. The consolation. That's Slice also one of the names. I was like, <laughs> all right, it's either consolation campaign, insanity island. You know, kind of like fantasy island. I kind of like that. I like yeah. Or Cthulhu comes, everyone dies. I was like, yeah, I like that. New DM, making sure. I... Yeah, our producer wants to know why is it a consolation campaign. A consolation prize mm-hmm. uh, because it's uh, too many people asked to be in a campaign, and Frank was like, "Well, well, we shit. We'll start another one. <laughs> we'll start another one, and they have to deal with Kyle. So it sucks for them." <laughs> yeah, it could be. No, that. no, that would be a mistake. I am definitely not the console. <laughs> this is the face right here. That's the face. <laughs> that's the that's the face of murder hobo there folks <laughs> that's true um so anyway saturday uh uh with the new ua that came out from wizards of the coast uh we all decided to try and screw with frank a little bit uh and we all came as monsters <laughs> of one form or another uh uh <laughs> we had two Damp peers, uh, I don't think they tried for anything. They just wanted to be damp peers, right? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Uh, then we had, I'm actually going to go next because I'm saving the best for last. Uh, I was Evelyn Franklin Baba Yagoshi, who was a, uh, a, a hag infused woman, uh, uh, also known as Elfa Baba, with the green skin and everything. Quite the character quite the uh, it was oh my gosh i should play bards more often and talk out my ass more often that was fun <laughs> that was fun you're forgetting uh, uh, you're forgetting one other <laughs> oh no i'm not i said i said i'm saving my personal favorite for last oh i thought you david, were talking about you <laughs> no 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 uh, uh david played the reborn construct francine barbarian goliath barbarian uh aka frankie yeah who was a mute and a troll a horrible horrible troll we lost scott scott's what happened to you man it was a hilarious episode yeah, he didn't talk at all <laughs> that's great that's great i like that 
Oh, tell him about the tell him tell him about the tooth (laughs) guy. Oh yes, yes. Uh, uh, So each of us got to really enjoy the random (laughs) powers that come with being either a half vampire, half hag, or half dead thing, Uh, uh, and being a well dead thing construct, whatever. Uh, uh, One of the uh, hex bloods power was to. Uh, remove body parts and give them to other people so that she can communicate with them and other things. Uh, In this case, a tooth, which she gave to Frankie so that (laughs) Alpha Baba could communicate with Frankie and Frankie could communicate with the rest of... Yeah, it wasn't a good idea at the beginning. (laughs) I think we fixed it later, though. (laughs) You did fix it later. <laughs> it was comedy gold, though. It was comedy yeah, gold. They gave the talkie device to the mute. <laughs> <laughs> the de- it was. It was great. That Red like scene. A I'm episode. trapped down here in a cage. Uh, could you send someone down to get me? <laughs> you, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but we were sent to retrieve Miranda, the blacksmith's daughter, from a cult of snake people slash Yuan-Ti slash I'm not sure what the entire thing was because we got into a lot of hijinks really quickly. Yes, uh, you did. <laughs> yes, we did. Thanks to some quick thinking on Francine's part. The undead bitch. Uh, <laughs> ruined every single one of my plans. Which I now know how Carol feels when she's joined the campaign. Yeah. Little note, folks. Goliaths don't fit through trap doors, usually. <laughs> so human-sized trap asses. doors. DM tips. If your characters want to be Goliaths, let them. <laughs> <laughs> encounter the issues that come up <laughs> and oh, always true. throw the that's dead true. body down the trap door yes oh yeah sure well, I'll be able to let alive. you Funk. Funk. <laughs> I'm going to put this key away <laughs> you were that close to getting out I of was, the cage I was <laughs> hoping to find like a key or something on them and then dropping the whole body down <laughs> yeah Scott these guys end up one falls down the trap door one gets stuck they pull him out the other two go down whoa 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 whoa. hold on i was thrown down as well yes because you fell in so kyle does his best to convince one of the priestesses down below he's okay he's from the southern district and and his roles are good so hey, she goes to get the my key. Persuasion was good too. Thank you yeah. very much. He, she goes to get the key to let him out. She comes back. There's two more. There's a dead body and a rope. No, I'm not going to let your persuasion technique uh, out. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, she was just going to kill the other two and leave me alone, I think. Uh, you, you can think that. Probably. <laughs> Funny. No, that, that that actually sounded good. That that actually mm-hmm. sounded good. Uh, I I I'll have to check that out. I'll have to check that out. Having a communication device with you is uh that's that's nice. That's that's really really good. That's really good. So how did it end? Did the uh, heroes prevail, or uh, were there or heroes? Did... Heroes. <laughs> well, with, monster with, squad with Frank's. Uh... Uh, lightning quick reflexes to rewrite a story. Yes, of course we succeeded. <laughs> Absolutely. Should let them die. Okay, <laughs> they were able to frame. Um, did they succeed on the original objective that you laid out for them to do? Oh, I had to move it around. <laughs> but yes, they, but, yeah. they actually threw so it over they, Frankie's they, they, shoulder. They did on the modified she had a mark right here. Do. Not, not, here. not here or here. here right, right here. here. <laughs> oh. they, did, they did succeed on their own merits. There was no fiddling with the numbers. Yeah. So well, what yeah. happened? Uh, did, did, uh, did, did everyone get to kill each other in the last 15 minutes? 
They did not. We didn't. We didn't you know, have time. That was hilarious. <laughs> I hinted at that. Yeah. And Carol, right over her head. Her head I was yeah. like, "Oh yeah, in about fifteen minutes, this will be over." And she's like, "Kyle, it's only it's, it's only, it's only got a half hour left. It's a half hour <laughs> left." <laughs> Oh, I see where you thought it was only 15 minutes yeah. left of the show. Yeah. Come with us now. Put it together. <laughs> uh, for those of you who are watching, keep in mind that most of us are, are Eastern Standard Time. And so the joke works better there than Central Time. <laughs> or any of the other times. Because we can't slow it down mm. anymore. <laughs> <laughs> You know, for us people living in the flyover countries, you know, the real heartland of the middle America, you know, the ones that believe in the true America, one that will eventually rise again. Oh, Lord. <laughs> you've got a you've got an American flag leisure suit, don't you? <laughs> Doesn't everybody? Doesn't everybody? I, I, yeah. I was one I, I, that, that I wore at the at the. At the at, at, at a at a at a special, you know, rally that we had, you know, when I was young, and then and then I hadn't had occasion to wear it again for a long, long time, and then sure enough, we have we have our our our, our fearless president because he's still my president, you know, you know, <laughs> speaking up. <laughs> so, I so, the yeah, <laughs> so, so I ended up getting another one because the one before was a little bit small because you know my my bone structure has gotten bigger over the years. So you know I had to have another one resized. So yes, I do have a American flag leisure. I have two of them. I bet you got a thong too. <laughs> uh, Speedo. That's right. No, that's that's not a Christian thing to have. That's no. true. Right. <laughs> If you'd ask some some Full question, one like piece that. it goes down to the ankles, all the way to your wrists. He's got the old timey singlet, they're you know, as a bathing suit. They're not called thongs; they're called man. Uh, very, they show off the squirrel masculine. real well. He's got the Borat the man looking. hammock. <laughs> He's got the, the he's got squirrel. the Borat, he's got the Borat man. <laughs> oh, all right, God. we got him again, boys. You know what's funny is Unsubscribe, actually... unsubscribe, unsubscribe. <laughs> you know, despite report, the fact that report, I'm the youngest report. one here, mine's a gray squirrel, Keeney. <laughs> no, you know, what, what's, what's funny here um, is that I'm actually in, in, uh, in uh, Midland, Texas, where, it's, where I grew up. And, and what's funny is, is that I noticed the longer I stay here in, in Midland, the more my, my, my birth accent comes out. And I actually do start talking more like I'm from West Texas than I do from, you know, from other places in <laughs> I, I don't know how that happens, but but I find that 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 it just kind of slips that my accent just kind of slips into into a into a more of a West Texas accent. So it's really easy for me to you know just turn it on like that after a little while. And, you know you don't really lose it, but you know sure. <laughs> that's 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 kind of scary in a in a way in a way. So anyway, Frank. <laughs> Why don't you tell us? Why don't you introduce yourself? Because I haven't asked anyone else to introduce themselves because that's because I hold you in such high esteem. I want to make sure of that course. our uh, listeners, you know, uh, know know exactly who you are, especially the who ones are, who don't want to do, see our and, faces. Uh, yeah, so. <laughs> uh, episode two hundred, Fate of Light Reach. It was the tri generational slash Margu campaign. Uh, if you've been following it for the last couple of weeks. You know, the guys are getting really tired of the halfling stealing all their shit and getting away with it. Uh, the previous episode, they burned down the pawn shop. Uh, and with Middle Frank coming back uh, for a special uh, game, uh, I was pretty sure they burned that shit down to the ground. Uh, he he the found game, a new religion, didn't he? <laughs> he found a new religion and they uh, he fed uh, cannibalistic chili to people. Then to albatrosses. Being the 200th episode, I was fortunate enough to get uh, the avian life of Light Reach to actually crap on two of the players from eating the poison chili. Uh, the funniest part was Copius met the brothel madam again, who he has a business, business only relationship with, and he's trying to foster that. Uh, meanwhile, she takes, she, he, me, takes a heavy flirting position with him. And while everything else is going to hell in a handbasket. He and her are enjoying a nice day at the bistro 
watching the clouds sail by while Frank is up setting fire and thunder waving. Uh, uh, the party rogue had a date with his brothel friends and the gimp master. Uh, they managed to meet a new NPC, Rodrigo the Brave, and uh, Man Fang, the youngest member of the party, the Dragonborn, actually accidentally knocked Rodrigo out as he threw open the door to the armament shop and Rodrigo was standing there. Uh, the roles were particularly devastating and Manfang's ability to play his character despite his young age was phenomenal. Uh, at one point in time, he was ordered not to go within range of something and immediately responded that his character would ignore that and do it anyway. <laughs> so uh, they did not yet burn down the town <laughs> they, it's getting are, close. <laughs> they are in the process of it uh also uh as uh some of you may know there was a portrait circulating around with felix the rogue and uh, it it was purchased by the brothel madam who opted to hang it in a place of enshrinement in her business after getting released by the gimp master felix saw the painting and became incensed uh so episode 200 uh was one of the funniest ones we've done in forever which one, which adventure sense is that that is putrid sewers <laughs> there are no putrid sewers and uh we actually got a shipment coming in that's due uh, within the next half Everyone hour. Everyone gets putrid sewers. No, I did not order any putrid sewers <laughs> this time. So uh, we've Did got she a bunch not of allow them. you to order more putrid sewers? No, the individual that needed putrid sewers got putrid sewers. <laughs> <laughs> it will probably now forever come with a warning uh, not to <laughs> inhale it as uh, Kyle has done. Uh, but episode 200 lived up to the hype. 200 game episodes. Uh, this is episode 103 of the uh, Between the Rolls. So for those of you watching us, we certainly appreciate it. Uh, and remember, if Don't you, you want to see on this do? talk show or on one of the one shots, hit us up, M Hobo Inc., Twitter or Gmail. We will get you on there. As Kyle pointed out, he's running the campaign this Thursday in lieu of Cacophony, which will be back next week. And this Saturday, I will be running uh, the Calamity campaign with both David and Scott, as well as Jesse and Rob. So please tune in on Thursday uh, for Cthulhu Comes, Everybody Dies. And again on Saturday with Calamity. They are stone, bronze age uh, with a twist. So they're that's stoned two. in the Bronze Age? Yes, they're stoned in the Bronze It's like year one. So. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> it, it will be interesting. Uh, Scott, back to you. Thank you. Sorry, I had to go um, <clears throat> had to go say hello to my uncle and grandmother again uh, real quick. Uh, so I had to stand up and walk out the room. I apologize for that profusely. As I said, I'm Do trying you apologize to for not best. wearing pants. <laughs> I, am, I, am, I am committed to keeping all of my comments 100% above board and completely normal and rational at this Somebody's point because I've so now. far off. <laughs> I know now that I've offended literally everyone in the entire country um, then I have to try trust to me there's more somewhere. people we can offend <laughs> I've got and a checklist tough. actually I, I make sure I cross them off I put a date on the last time I offended them <laughs> And you have oh, like a, yeah, there, there's, nope, nope, I'm not going to go down that rabbit hole. I'm not Let's talk about Canadians. <laughs> Canadians are too easy fine. Go. You can talk nope. anything I'm about fine. Canadians. Nope. Keep it right right down the middle, right down the middle. Bunch of so pansies, our... you can make fun of them all night. <laughs> <laughs> That's so right, Chris. normally what we do is <laughs> try to... Screen's frozen. Uh oh. You there, Scott? Try to. Yes, I'm here. I'm my uh, my internet connection a bit a bit slow. Can you guys hear me? Mm -hmm. We can hear you. We can yeah, hear you. Your so. Can you guys hear me? All right. Uh, uh, oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Stupid. Let me. Uh, Canadians. I, I may have to do that for a while. Is that going to be better? Do you yeah. think? Yeah. Fine. Yeah. All right. 
uh, it, the uh, internet connection here isn't perfect. So uh, I'm going to have to do this here for a little while. I can hopefully turn it back on in a sec. Um, but what we would like to do is we talk about character creation and how the way you create your characters can help bring life to a campaign. Or um, if overplayed, um, maybe not, may do the death to a campaign. But also how they how they change and migrate and uh, can can mature through a campaign. So in the second half, um, did, did Kyle, did a, you want to take this subject, or did you want me to uh, to a prompt and uh, lead uh, or? I don't know I, uh, which direction I think, he is. I think David's that way on the Oh, right there, okay. Not, so. Oh, I was wondering what the hell they're pointing at. David, and I'm like, David, what? Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, basically, David, we're yes. Did, did, uh, you, that's right. This was your subject. Yeah, I'm sorry. I got that. I got that. Uh, I, I got drew that the short so straw tonight. So, <laughs> why, don't, why, why don't you lead us through this thing and get me off this so I don't continue to put people in and sit my foot in my mouth? And oh, <laughs> Right Don't there. worry, you That's turning off the camera's really screwed up Twitch. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's funny. Okay, so anyway, one of uh, uh, the subject that we kind of broached tonight was to do uh, that. <laughs> <laughs> was uh, character creation. Uh, like Scott said, how does it impact the game? Uh, the character's backstory, uh, as far as you know, like. And a potential growth of the character. I mean, things change. Your characters evolve within the story. Uh, you know, in so, in some instances, if you created your character to be a bard or something like that, I mean, things may happen, and suddenly, you know, you're not a bard anymore or something. I don't know. Uh, plot lines can really uh, impact a character, and a character can impact the plot line. So. I don't know, Frank, what do you think on that? I mean, being a DM, how did you, how do you see characters? I mean, like, for example, the Margu campaign, I mean, you saw those guys come up, were there any like deviations or just how they grew or anything like that? Or I think in the Margu campaign, uh, because all of these guys were original members <laughs> of Minions of Habu, my first video podcast, and to see their characters grow from one to the other it is always interesting from a dm standpoint because it's nice to know that a person a, a player is vested enough in the game to go ahead and show character growth uh and i i think if if you never have to say it to a dm but if you are involved so much that you can see character growth within the pc uh, that just speaks volumes for any game. Uh, with the Margu campaign, you see these guys honing their skills even when they know it's a bad idea. This most recent episode, Man Fang, played by the youngest member, knew he should not do this, but knew his character was stupid enough that he would do it anyway. And taking that leap of faith uh, is what builds the character's growth and we've seen it with him we've seen it with copious because whenever i throw the flattery at him he eats it up and he knows he shouldn't because he knows there's going to be payback and there's always payback so anytime you see that growth uh carol in the last campaign uh her character went from an accidental pc to a full-fledged member uh, and it's just always good to see that. And as a DM, I think that's, especially for you young DMs, I think you should push that. And the way you push that is use their backstory to both hold them up and keep them down. So that's just my two cents on that. Okay. Uh, Kyle, <laughs> we kind of had like a short-term impact <laughs> on our, our characters <laughs> this past Saturday. I still don't remember it, but okay, continue. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, Frank had this, this story that he, uh, for, for the, the adventure that night that he had written a long mm -hmm. time ago. And, uh, he thought we were going to play, you know, uh, pretty much straight characters for it. Sure. Um, but, uh, you know, we decided to 
throw a twist in and we created these characters using the unearthed arcana and um uh use the gothic lineage uh for each one now one of the things that that i did like when i created francine is like it and i i played it up like i threw her when i created her i threw her stats uh you know of course she's being a barbarian so everything was strength and constitution intelligence was really not there and i played that out uh with some of the bad choices that she made i mean she wasn't as dumb as a box of hammers but just made bad choices and that's how i played it off a lot of that was also player bad choices but i was just going with it and i'm sure that happens a lot and that can impact the gameplay and it did it completely took us in a com uh, completely different tangent from where uh, the DM was guiding us to go. Yes. So, um, but I mean, with uh, some of the adventures and uh, that you have written and that you have DM'd on the show, um, short-term impact on things like um, I, mean, I don't know. Have you ever noticed that with any of uh, the the situations within the uh, adventures that you created like as a dm i mean uh i mean your characters pro i mean your players probably go in a direction that you didn't you didn't expect like uh you know we always try to murder hobo each other towards the end usually or something like that or something like that yeah how does that how does that mess up your your game <laughs> Um, I mean, from from what you have conceived and the the roadmap that you have planned out for for the adventure, I mean, how badly does like like a character and since it's a short term adventure, people only have like a really short backstory to it, and they're just gonna you know just go with whatever they've created. I mean, how has sure. that impacted, and how'd you had to think about it? Um, from the DM side, mm -hmm. um, I don't know. I think the person who tries to screw things up the most is head wound, Harry, Larry, or Gary. Uh, um, but in ways he ends up doing it in such a brilliant way, at least for me, he didn't kill any, uh, children, and any of my one shots. That <laughs> Almost was an got accident. Him on that one. <laughs> <laughs> accident. Uh, uh, but you get this dwarf who ends up, uh, who you expect to be a complete and utter idiot. And then he does something that uh, literally saves the day. Uh, uh, and then I'm going back thinking about the most dangerous game shot where we had. Frank and Scott uh, as Head Wound Larry and Eric Hall Justice Man, respectively. And Frank threw in a, a, a loop where he had a brilliant idea, and it's like, well, I, I wasn't expecting the idiot character to have one, but that's <laughs> that's that's characters. Um, that's characters acting out their backstories or um changing the characters how they originally thought it would be um to that um like say with eric called justice man i know he was a noble guy but near the end there where everyone's supposed to join in on the spell jammer there's a force field that only allowed things made of metal to get in or out because there were rust monsters a swarm of rust monsters who were trying to eat wow. the ship Yes. And what he ends up doing is <laughs> Head Wound Larry runs in because he has enough metal on his armor to get through. The other two players have no metal on their armor. And <laughs> Eric calls like, I'm going to go run in this direction and buy you time to get through the force field. <laughs> Unknowing um, that he's the only one who can help the others get through. Oh my god! <laughs> I oh, think man. one of them had a shield or something like that. But it's 
he's playing that character to perfect backstory, sacrificed his life, <laughs> almost getting the other two killed for it. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> but uh, it's... And that's people who are acting out or 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 changing their backstory in the middle of something. Mm -hmm. Even something as short-lived as this, where Headmoon Larry is uh, a, a character who does not show up a lot and probably doesn't have too much thought behind it, other than what Frank gives it, you know, they'll kill children, uh, to Eric called Justice Man. That was one time! <laughs> around for such a long time that even though he is a one-shot character, he has this backstory that, I mean, eventually uh, Frank made a one-shot uh, uh, involving Right, and so right. had his had his brother Chet. Mm -hmm. Chet, that's right. And then Chet. there's the one that I killed him in. And, <laughs> you know, it turned out the yeah. work work there was head head wound Barry. <laughs> so Barry, right? Oh, Barry. No man. So yeah, Frank, did you always intend to play head wound Larry like that? I mean, just yeah, I always play a stupid dwarven fighter, that's... and he never comes out as a well. Okay. For me, he's never come out as a stupid dwarf and five fighter. I think you've played two or three, maybe. I think three. Died not in always two of them. Larry, but <laughs> yeah, <laughs> died twice, not by my own hand, mind you. <laughs> no. To be fair, uh, you did try to kill the party in that first one. <laughs> Where are I'm the gonna... guns on this spaceship? <laughs> Next time I play, I'm going to kill them again. <laughs> 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 you might want to write two adventures. <laughs> <laughs> first one lasts 10 minutes. So, Scott, uh, Kyle was talking about Aracol, and uh, I mean, I've only seen a few of the episodes <laughs> with him in it. And I mean, tell us a little bit about Aracol, because he's such a colorful character. He has some flaws. Did he always have that overwhelming flaw? And you know which one it is. <laughs> The speech impediment. <laughs> yes, yes. So one thing I've, I've done, and um, Air Call came out from a um, as an offshoot from a um, campaign that I run. He was the local, um, I want to say, constabulary, the the local you know sheriff, for, for for lack of a better word, who had a great inflated sense of uh, of, of of duty tremendously inflated sense of duty that uh but his his people loved him even though he he was almost a laughable character but uh but uh, I, I i had these you know ways that the uh that the pcs would interact with them they were like you know who is this you know, la you know who is this joke of a guy and stuff like that and then other npcs were like no no you don't understand that guy has laid his life down for us on multiple occasions. We would, we would, you know, lay down and die for him. So I always thought it was interesting to play a character that had this, this overarching sense of, you know, nobility, uh, yet was on his face laughably absurd. And, and so I, I, I tried to, play that character about you know someone that um, on first inspection that you know you just completely you know dismiss him because he's almost a uh -oh. absurd you know someone was but at the same time uh you know also the stickler for the rules and is very stuck up and you know is is died is a died in the wool paladin you know a lawful good died in the wool the honor duty paladin and um and then how would that you know interact with all of this other free-flowing type of you know world that 5e kind of is that everyone takes a little bit here and a little bit here i uh, sorry if i'm cutting in and out um and i decided to claim as a one shot uh to add that to where that ridiculousness can can play really well but at the same time whenever he has a chance to sacrifice us to do the right thing to do something that 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 sense of honor and justice, uh, you know, comes through. That so that's that's where I where where I come to play with them, and that's kind of come to where where I always like to have some type of flaw in my character 
that uh, that you know it's going to be an internal struggle to see if that character can grow above that flaw. And um, you know, in my very first time I played, um, I played a guy who had um, 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 Balin Long and Thin, who you know had just <laughs> a very long and thin um, part of manhood that he wore tights. And, and that, that was like my first introduction to playing a character that was just had, had some ridiculousness to him. And then I said, well, I'm just going to keep this up. And then the idea, well, I'm going to bring air call over here. And so that was, that was where I started doing it. And every now and then I'll play, I'll play, you know, some more old, uh, you know, incontinent elf, but, you know, air call is always my favorite. And, uh, you know, I normally keep, uh, you know, keep coming back to him, but uh, the idea of, of a character who's flawed and to see how he rises above it. That, that that has always been an interesting an interesting motif to play as a character and so that that's, that's where that's where air call comes from cool cool uh we've actually played into that and frank you've run it w- with it you've uh, created a one shot that revolved right around the air call um so how did that come about uh i played in that one with you guys so I mean, so I got to experience what was happening. So that was the one with Christy, right? <laughs> that was with his uh, his uh, cousin, the other paladin, Chat. Yeah. Chat. yeah. Uh, with Scott and Ericall, I, I mean, I, I really love Ericall, Justice Man, for everything that he really went does. ahead and pointed out. It's just, it's, it's just a fun character to mess with. Uh, and every time Eric Hall comes back, I will not hesitate to do something weird. And the one with Chet, uh, I wanted to show a bit of a backstory on why he was the way he was. Uh, and not really screw with him or his character, but to just kind of go ahead and give an evolution to, okay, this is what we've seen from him, but why? And to give him that opportunity to have a living, breathing backstory, uh, I, I like to do it because it's immersive. Uh, the player likes it. The people who are watching or paying attention tend to like it because it's like, oh, okay, I can understand that now. Uh, and it just gives, I don't want to say closure because in a one shot, they're always open. I mean, if right. Eric Hall died, he'd be back. But uh, it's nice to see, you know, Make close that circle up, and okay, now now I see where he's coming from. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, any any chance I can, I mean, <clears throat> when Christy played and I whacked him in the head with the board, and he he got to talk normal for a <laughs> while. I mean, that's just yeah. hilarious because it's like, holy shit, what the hell happened to Eric Call Justice Man? Well, you just took another <laughs> shot to the cranium, so you can go back to your speech impediment. But it's just that little leap of faith. It's like, mm-hmm. oh, okay, that so that would be Eric Call if he was normal. Yeah, but I'm gonna hit him in the head. So. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, to get to give him that chance at a backstory and to kind of rectify Chet's uh, problems. And if you think back to the movie Weird Science, uh, mm-hmm. and Bill right. Paxton, Chet, Chet right. uh, was just a pain in the ass. So I'm yeah. like okay we'll, mm-hmm. we'll marry these two together and that's what it'll be and scott yep. ran with it and it turned out fun it was nice. good it was good nice. and that that thing about hitting in the head that was totally spontaneous that yep. that just I, I just thought that would be funny and then all of a sudden he can talk normal <laughs> <laughs> i am erica justice man and I, I, uh, uh, uh. <laughs> Hit him again. Nice. Man, follow me <laughs> oh my god but yeah anytime you can run with uh, uh either a character's strength or their flaws mm-hmm. you gotta do it because it just builds for especially not in a one shot per se but for any campaign or long-term series of adventures if you can just kind of build up their backstory and give the well this is why oh okay you know it deepens the the pot of information and it okay i i this is like a good book only frank's telling it so it's a shitty pamphlet but you know <laughs> as long as you can make it together i was work. gonna say it's like one of those kids board books that my toddler uh, yeah. likes to eat 
<laughs> nice. I know this will fit. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Well, we have we have two new campaigns starting with uh, you guys as DMs. <clears throat> You've had backstory submitted to you. How is that going to affect your process? Uh, so, Kyle, why don't we start with you? And then Scott, we'll get to you to get your perspective because uh, you've DM'd, you know, like Frank for so long that, I mean, you know, I'm sure you've had campaigns and, you know, had to develop things like that from, from your players, you know, what they submitted and all. Yeah. Yeah. I'll, I'll be, I'll be, let's, let, I'll, I'll be happy to be happy to talk after Kyle and Frank. Uh, okay. Frank can talk about what a wonderful, wonderful, uh, uh, you know, story that he's gonna he's gonna craft for us all, and uh, how much we're all gonna just just try our damnedest to play straight, normal, one hundred percent legitimate lore based. <laughs> I've read all of your backstories. That is horseshit. <laughs> <laughs> so okay, Kyle. All right, you've got all your players' backstories by now, right? Mm-hmm uh in some form or another yes okay so (laughs) how are you gonna run with this i mean i'm not trying to get spoilers or anything like that but just kind of give us well let's clarify a few things first uh of the two campaigns running this is my first one uh and i've opted i had an opportunity to use frank's uh skeleton campaign and just come up with everything more or less everything myself or to run uh, an actual module first and try that out. And uh, uh, we've opted for the module, the the adventure path, as it were. And so uh, adapting characters' backstories to something that's already written without trying to give spoilers... (laughs) Yeah, a little little difficult. You know what? I have great players except for Caitlin. Uh, <laughs> sorry, did I say Caitlin? I meant and Carol. That's for but... the little bitch comment. So thank you, Kyle. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, uh, we're just playing with you. No. So. Um, and uh, to do that, um, a lot of this is. I've read the, or I'm reading the entire module front to back just to see what has been made, what hasn't been made. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, And unfortunately, they're also on an island for most of it. So (laughs) they're not in a very large space. There's not a lot of large things to explore. And so when I asked for their backstories, uh, uh, one of the things I wanted to do was try and get them involved in (laughs) as much of the process as possible. And so... um, that is my first <laughs> producer goes that's the first mistake um, um and so part of their backstories i just had a a couple lists of questions to ask them you know um who do you know got you on a boat ride to this island who do you know on the island who's your contact um give me two rumors about the entire wide world around you and then give me two rumors about the island itself um And I'll say, as a first-time DM, the hardest thing I've had to do is look at their backstories and be like, oh my gosh, I want to make all of your backstories bad guys or murder them. (laughs) And I was like, whoa, 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 you can't do that. Yeah, actually you can. (laughs) I I shouldn't do that. And so uh, um, to uh, uh, to both surprise myself with how the story was going and um and to make sure that the players didn't all have major villains in the backstory um uh, i ended up going to frank's uh deal where you just let a dice roll decide it i was like oh yeah the closer to one it is the closer to them being a good guy the closer to 12 and they'll be the arch villain And I told my players this because they wrote the backstories and then I had a conversation with each of them and we just asked questions about the backstory and any point I had a question where, or they didn't know something, but I would have to know something. I ended up rolling a die. Um, A couple of the backstories involve a cult, 
which um, is a big no-no in the uh, uh, enlightened age that they are uh, set in, which means that it gets ultimately destroyed. And so I ended up rolling D12, and it's like, okay, well, how successful were the uh, uh, ruling council in smashing out this cult? I rolled a die. Um, you have to watch the show to find out how successful they were. <laughs> we'll see how that goes. You rolled an um, 18 on a D12, didn't you? <laughs> well, you know about that then. <laughs> I thought we well, were keeping that between you and me, Frank. Um, already posted. Really a lot with writing a module and doing that and asking pointed questions and getting them related to people who are in there is that um, as I go through it, it's like, oh, the blacksmith Beatrice. That's not the blacksmith's name anymore. The character, the the players wrote that their contact is the blacksmith by this name. And it's like, all right, there we go. We just trade out a name. <laughs> and, you know, you expect them to be more involved in doing that. And so where the module will give you this amount of text for it, I just double that amount for the player characters uh, in PC because I figure the I hope they'll talk to them. If not, actually, I don't hope they'll talk to them. I didn't write anything good about that character. <laughs> They're going to talk to them, then. Oh. <laughs> um, and so I think already I'm having a different situation than, say, Frank is, who is doing his own thing off the top of his head. Uh, so... Right. Yeah. I guess you're getting the same question, right? Uh, pretty much, kind of. I mean, because I'm in your campaign and I submitted my backstory and then you sent us information too. Uh, I don't, I don't want to give any of that away, but I mean, um, I mean, how did that come about your process that you decided to do all that? I mean, you've got our backstories. How is that going to impact your game? Uh, um, each and every one of you have a vastly different backstory, uh, which as Kyle's pointed out, does cause some headaches uh but yeah and and as with any campaign there are a lot of spoilers there's a particularly major one that i'm really having to dance around uh but you guys are starting in a small serene community close-knit some of you are outsiders some of you have grown up here it's beautiful it's idyllic shit will go south fairly quickly uh, one of the best things I've got going for me is with four experienced RPers, uh, one of the backstory, or I'm sorry, several of the backstories are like, well, I did this and this and this. And I'm like, oh, boom, <laughs> that saves me from writing about this area because <laughs> <laughs> nice. that backstory is going to cover that bullshit and I'll just right. flesh that out later. Uh, but each of you, the, the first uh, the first episode or two will be you guys performing a rather base feat of proving your ability to be part of the adventuring class slash warrior class. You're going out on a hunt. Not that big a deal. One of the things I, one of the main reasons I did that was if uh, somebody's playing this and they start to get into it and it's like, ah, oh, I made a mistake. I should have done this it will be easy to interchange uh, initially. Once you get a few episodes in, that's pretty much who you're playing. Yes, Kyle. Okay. If the players are like, oh, I really did not want to play this character. Mm -hmm. They write up a new character for next time. Mm -hmm. Do you keep the backstory of the old character in the world? Or mm -hmm. do you just say, yeah, screw that. All right, we're using the backstory of the new character. <laughs> All no, right. You never throw away a good backstory. Uh, it's always... Yeah. I mean, thinking back to the last campaign, Carol's sister yanked it right out of my ass. <laughs> nice. Like, okay, what do we do? How, how, you know, because she gave me a very fact filled backstory. But one of the things she glossed over was, oh, you know, I, I have this sister. <laughs> Screw that. She's going to be a major villain. <laughs> you know, funny enough, she did the same thing for my backstory. Here's my family members, but they have nothing to do with this campaign and they don't need to be in this one. They're right. all going to die. <laughs> all um, right. <laughs> but yeah, any anytime you can use and not maliciously or uh 
negligently, I'll say, I'll always be careful with their backstory because if they're invested in it and you can tell if they write like Kyle does a book on their backstory, they're mm -hmm. invested in this character and they want to see things. Now, the other problem with being the DM is I have four personalities that I have to balance uh, and they all expect, you know, this is what I expect and this is how it should go. Uh -huh. So the real trick to DMing is to go ahead and make sure that that spotlight just rotates on all of them uh -huh. and never, and I, I Black never, <laughs> I never try and focus it on me. Uh, that's why I, I was so apologetic with the long winded soliloquies that I was giving, uh, although they are necessary. So when you're doing it, you want to give that much of their backstory and sprinkle it in at various places. Now, if somebody gives you a really good hook uh, and one of them has, and I won't go into it, that's going to change the compass on your campaign. And it could change it for the good. It could change it for the bad, uh, but it's definitely going to come into play. So, if my focus is here, maybe I just turn the compass point a few points over, and then that way I, I marry their, a part of a backstory with the original goal, and bing, bang, boom, you have an immersive story, hopefully. Gotcha. So, Scott, I mean, what has your, been your process when you DM'd with backstories with your characters? You're muted. Yes, I, uh, oh, oh, sorry. Uh, you know, I, and I understand that we're also running a little bit low on time, so I'll, I'll, I'll keep it quick. I have to understand a, um, a little bit about whenever I get the backstories from the players. First of all, I have to do a <clears throat> relatively quick assessment about how experienced a player is. And, um, and I can, I can the, the depth, of, depth of detail of their backstory is not always a very good indicator of how experienced a player is. I'll, I'll say that right now. You have some players that are very experienced. They don't need to put in or they don't feel the need to put in tons of backs because they want to RP it on the fly. Um, and a really experienced player can, can do that quite easily. Um, and then you have some very experienced players that you know, love the detail and the minutia of where they came from, what, you know, where they, where they did this, what their parents did with the, the and it's very, very detailed. Um, <clears throat> What I've found is, is that the most important part, and, and I'll kind of echo what, uh, what Frank was saying, is to keep the spotlight moving. And you do that a few times in the first few episodes, and you find out which ones relatively quickly, you know, like the spotlight, which ones don't like the spotlight, which ones, you know, like the spotlight too much, and you may have to, you know, <laughs> Uh, you know, understand about and which ones, you know, <laughs> present other people who, who liked it too much. So there's always, as you say, you have personalities within a campaign you have to balance as well. And, and working people's backstory and working people, um, you know, things that you believe that they want to do. Uh, and sometimes it's good to have a quick little conversation outside the game session as well, a quick little, you know, email back and forth, you know, where are you seeing this? Where are you seeing that? Um, and then those can help be little guides and hints about, about directional. But I think the most important part is understanding, you know, who, what the experience level of your player is um, and then gauging that with how much they enjoy being in the spotlight or how much they enjoy having a, uh, a story or a plot or a section or a side quest, whatever you want to call it, revolve around a resolution of their player um, and then how the other players balance and then, and then you know, react to that. Um, all players, and I think one thing that 5e has done and makes it interesting is the ease of, of multi-classing and adding new character classes because that allows characters to really shape. And I don't want to say min-max, but shape right. and grow through a campaign. So if they see something isn't working for a while or that they're this, you know, this theme of them being a fighter, 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 isn't that great. And they really are kind of thinking about, you know, 
maybe out of character doing something in a warlock or something like that. Well, then that, that entails, you know, finding of a, of a patron, and everything else like that. That's when you need to have the conversation. That's when you need to understand, well, how is your character going to act with this? How are they going to react? And that allows, for instance, maybe a previously um, unspotlighted character to now the, the focus can go to them and saying, okay, let's go down this, this, you know, you come into contact with this powerful otherworldly beating who now, you know, is going to commit you to a thing and, and you've taken your first warlock class, right? So 5e is very good about giving mechanisms for DMs to allow the spotlight to move and to allow uh, characters to develop themselves, not just in RP, but also the mechanics of how they play their character. So from that standpoint, I think it's kind of easier on the DM, and um, but also um, it's just a little bit more to balance, you know. But hey, that's right. That's where we all play it. Uh, you know, that's why we all enjoy it. And uh, you know, the the beauty of D and D is it lets us uh, tell a collective story. And um, but that means we all have we all have chapters to write. Well, well, well there so. we go, folks. Three different perspectives on oh, uh, how chapters to write. Yeah, <laughs> how characters could impact a campaign and how backstory can play into it. So, yeah, baby's got backstories. So there we go. Outstanding. So I have no further questions or anything <laughs> to go out with. Well, take us home then. All right. All um, right, everybody. Hey, you can follow us on Twitch. You can follow us on Twitter. You can take a look at our archive, both on Twitch, on YouTube as well. If you want to shoot the shit about D&D, come to over to our Discord channel. You want to get some cool RPG gifts for friends or family, try out our store. Uh, we've got some cool stuff like phone cases. People use phone cases still? Quality phone cases. Quality phone cases. Not we that also get nice shit. shirts, but not as nice as our shirts. Oh, our shirts uh, <laughs> are so nice. I can't wait to get mine. Spun. <laughs> I do. I got a uh, tiki masala on my shirt. I oh. cried for a few days. <laughs> it's in the wash right now. I'm getting ready to wear it to bed again tonight. Maybe wear it again to work tomorrow. I don't know. It's really They're nice shirts, though. They're, They're real really nice shirts. Uh, but, you know, uh, you're getting tired of looking at our faces. And so, you know. <laughs> If you want to be in the one shot or if you want to talk to other people about your experiences in D&D or your lack thereof, you know, hit us up on uh, Murder Hobo Inc. at Twitter or at the Gmail. Uh, once again, thanks to our sponsors, Odd Fish Games. Guys, you went through a lot tonight. Uh, it was pretty hate filled. Uh, and we're thankful that you at least sponsored this last episode. Uh, Thank you, Odd <laughs> Fish Games. <laughs> adventure sense <laughs> and they have the shine project great for helping your characters build backstories or uh getting yes. dms to honestly ask questions about the backstories uh one of my favorite things that i come across and they're going to actually make a DD version of that a role-playing game version of that this one's actually more for books but they apply <laughs> to anything uh, uh and of fun. course we're going to thank pirate dog dice for some killer dice uh for when you're rolling like shit get pirate dog dice uh i feel like that's a compliment uh don't forget about <laughs> uh, i'm sure you feel that that's a compliment <laughs> i've had plenty of characters killed by pirate dog dice so. a lot of them killed uh and finally uh this game's weeks we got thursday the cthulhu comes everyone dies and we have the Calamity Campaign. We like our CCs, everybody. Um, and then I guess we're going to have a campaign on Sunday as well, Margu. Margu. Uh, we'll Margu. see if they burn Light Reach to the ground. Oh, yeah. God. <laughs> the answer will not surprise you. <laughs> no. After that, everybody wave to the cameras. We're going to say good night. Good night.